so hello and good evening. This is Ruth Pozuelo from Curval.com and uh, I can't believe it's already Friday. I mean, time really, really, really flies. Uh, but the good thing about Fridays is that the weekend starts very, very soon and it's time for a new Tax Fridays, right? So in today's video, I am actually going to show you a trick and it is how you can enter data in Power Pivot. And with this enter data, what I mean is, you know, in Power Query, where you have the possibility to create um, a table, basically Excel style, you know, you go cell by cell and then you're, you can write anything you like. And this is a support table. And uh, all the time when I've doing this, I've always gone to Power Query and done it. But oftentimes I just rather have it in Power Pivot because I'm not going to do anything else with it in Power Query. So it's just bothering me, basically. Um, so what I'm going to show you today is how you can do that enter data in Power Pivot. In case you didn't know how to do it, just follow along. I'll show you in a second. OK, so here we have a blank Power BI, so desktop. In this case, we don't need any special um, um, data set or anything. I'm going to show you first what I mean with enter data in Power Query. So if you go to the query editor and you see here enter data, if you click on these, you will get like an Excel like experience, what I'd like to call it. And here you can just write anything. You can write name and then you can write surname and then you can write you know, and this is very good for support tables, right? Uh, or if, for example, if you would like to add flags to a country, you could uh, do it here. So you write country Spain, and then you have the URL, the link to the place where you can find the flag online and, and then use it later on, right? Um, so once you have it in here, it will load as a normal table. You click close and apply and you will have it available in Power BI or Power Pivot. There. So sometimes, and for these kind of support tables, I'd rather have them in Power Pivot directly, right? So I don't want them in Power Query if I'm not going to use it there for anything. If just using it here for support data or something, then I'd rather have them here only. So it makes the Power Query model cleaner. So what you can do is you go here to modeling, you go to new table and to create the table. This is how you create. You start with this I don't know how this is called in English. We, we call it brackets. Just let me know in the comment box how these things are called. Um, then this is a um, row. So every time we have parentheses, that's a row. So what this is going to give us is a table with three rows. And row one, it will be one, and row two, two, and we'll row three, three. And we see a column with three rows, as we wrote here. So we have row one, row two, and row three. Could you have one column or two columns and two rows? Of course you can. So to do that, do you just have a comma in between? And then uh, we can write, I don't know, Mary. And then a comma, let's say that the one is then ID and the other one is um, a name. And then we can have Hampus is a nice name. So as you can see, it creates a value uh, one to three, and then it creates a um, another column on on each row. You get the name. Uh, can you have uh, 
DAX formulas. Yes, you can. So you can write date. So convert these to a date. We say 2017 1 1. And here we have the date 2017, 1, 2, and date 217, 217, you know what I mean, uh, 1, 3, and then you get it formatted as date. So you can have also DAX expressions within this table. Now, questions. Can I have these without, for example, this name? And of course, the answer is no. You have to have the same structure on the rows, otherwise it won't work. But you don't have to have a value there, so if you just write the comma, then it will just leave an empty value as it should, right? So the another thing, the name of the columns will be, if there's one, it will be value. And then as you add columns, it will be value one, value two, value three. Okay. Uh, this is the it. Um, but you cannot change the name in here. You have to create them first and then you change the name. This is name and this is ID, for example. Okay. So another thing now, as you can see, this is date, this is text and this is number. You can see because they are right uh, aligned to the right. So if you say, no, I just, this is not an ID. This is something else. And, Two should be two S. Of course, we have to have the text. So all the values of chords will change to text. So once you add a text on one, even if this is a number, everything will be a, um, a text. And nothing strange with that. That is the behavior on Power Query 2, right? So this is a way to create tables in, um, in Power Pivot directly. And tables like, you know, you would do in Excel, you just perhaps, you know, you write it a little bit strange. You know, I think they did a very nice job on Power Query where you have this Excel-like cells thing that you can just write here. You have to, you know, this is one row, that's one row, and then you, you have to think a little bit when you're writing to make sure you get it right. But I mean, you can always start with it and play with it. And, or you could just write it in Excel and then convert it to these. That is also an option in case that you have a long table that you would like to add. But uh, yeah, I hope this helps you create ad hoc tables with, you know, any value like you would do in Excel to have your, you know, supporting tables for your models. So, um, yeah. Okay, so this is actually all for today. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. It's a small trick, but I think it can help uh, in many situations. Um, if you have any comments, questions, suggestions, uh, let me know on the comment box or the social channels listed below. Make sure you fill in the DAX Friday survey. I always read it. Um, like it, share it to let me know that you enjoy it so I can make similar content. Subscribe if you are new to the channel. I publish Power BI videos every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Friday always dedicated to DAX. And then make sure to hit the bell to receive notifications, okay? Because uh, YouTube stopped doing that for a while. Uh, no, they stopped doing that period. <laughs> so if you want to know when I publish a new video, you need to click the bell. Okay. So other than that, have an amazing weekend and I will see you again on Monday. Take care. Bye.